Welcome to ITSS Online Training. I'm Pierre Fredriksen from Seven Technologies Denmark and I'm here to present our SCADA system ITSS. This is lesson 29, ITSS Master. The ITSS Master module is the main module in ITSS. This is the control center of ITSS. This is where the system designer and the end user will start the individual applications. Let's start it up. This is the program icon. And we can see that it starts up a project immediately. This is the demo project included in the IGSS installation that I'm starting up here. Um, and let's first take a look at the IGSS master window. We have a title bar with the name of the project and the name of the station. This could be a server or an operator station. We have um, the application menu. That's the little bird up here. Uh, we can switch between design mode and runtime mode. Let's switch design mode. We see that there's a design and setup tab. If we switch back again to runtime mode, that tab disappears. That's only for the system designer. Um, and we have the different ribbons. We'll come back to those. And uh, over here on the left side, we have the documents and status pane, we call it. At the top, we see the different uh, system statuses, like system is started, system is stopped, uh, PLC communication is simulated uh, at this point in the demo. Uh, and we have access to all the help files. And notice that we're only looking at the runtime help files now, because we're in runtime mode. Uh, we have access to all the reports in the system, and we have access to all the dashboards that we have defined in the system. Over on the right side, we have what we call the workspace. Uh, the workspace is um, by default a web page provided by 7T with some information about IGSS. You can replace that page with your own if you want your end users to look at specific information uh, for your plant. Okay, um, let's take a look at how the system works in runtime mode. Because as you remember, under the application menu, we are still in runtime mode. Now in runtime mode, um, we have access to the home, runtime and diagnostics, information and support tabs. So let's take a closer look at this. Um, if we start on the uh, home tab we can see that we can stop and start and restart the um, project we can um, open the individual applications uh, and we can finally change language let's let's try that we can change language online so if we switch to german for example all the buttons and ribbons and menus will speak german and this is online for all the uh, runtime modules. Go back to English and continue on the runtime and diagnostics tab. You can say that this is the troubleshooting tab. Now when the system is running you might run into problems and you have a number of different uh, mo modules that you can go into here. You can first of all you can browse the different uh, system log files and data files you can go into um, different status uh, indicators here. But what we want to do right now is go into what we call the event log. We go into the event log and we see all the different events that have been written uh, in the system. If we click on the filter button it becomes much more intuitive because now we can actually filter. Uh, let's take a filter on type and say we only want to look at errors and we only want to look at warnings. Um, and what you can see over here is that we have here we have a corrupt log file for example. Um, we can also go in and we can filter on the individual facility. This was actually this was a DC module thing. Um, so if we switched off error and warning up here and put on master instead. 
we could see a lot of different things that we had started up the IDSS master and terminated it. This was what I just did, actually. Right? Uh, so you have lots of uh, filtering options here on the event log. The driver log we will uh, treat in another video. Um, so please refer to that video. And um, let's, let's move on. Um, under information and support, the uh, user, the end user now has direct access to the license file so that he can see exactly what he has bought for his plant and uh, this will also make it easier to communicate with the uh, system integrator. We can take a look at uh, hard lock information uh, about the hard lock that you are using on your system. And another new feature in uh, IGSS version 9 is that uh, you can now have remote support using TeamViewer. Um, this is a great remote control software that uh, our support team will use and they can hook directly up to your plant if, if necessary. Okay, now let's switch into the design mode to see what the difference is. When we click on the application button and go into design mode, we get the design and setup tab. And that tab is, of course, where we do all the configuration. This is where we can, for example, create a completely new project. So if I go home and I click stop, this will actually allow me to go in here and create a completely new project in the project wizard. It also allows me to go into the uh, system configuration module where we set up the whole system. This is, for example, the demo where we set up three drivers. We've set up a number of um, nodes uh, in this system. Again, we will treat this in another video, so we'll need not go into detail here. Um, we can open the definition module where we design the mimic diagrams. And um, that's it. Uh, this is where the whole design takes place and the setup of user administration, etc. Now, finally, uh, another thing that we've done in version nine is that we've uh, changed the um, we've changed the check and install uh, procedure. Um, so, if you have made some changes to your project. Uh, you need not go into the definition module in order to install it. You can actually do it straight from the master. Just click on the check and install button here. And you can come into installation options and just keep the default settings here and click OK. The Chelm module, as you can see here, has now uh, analyzed your whole project and it says installation completed with no errors and you can now start up your project. You click no here. Um, finally, let's uh, talk a little bit about multi-user systems. In a multi-user system, uh, you will actually create a new project from the project wizard. Then you'll go into your system configuration module and you will set up the number of stations that you need. Here we have a demo station that is the server in our system and we have one operator station but we can put on more operator stations. Very simple. Just click on the icon new station. You get a station A. Change it to OP2. Let's put on a couple more. OP3 etc. Now you've set up a multi-user system and what you want to do now is you want to um, distribute it to the operator stations. Okay, so let's imagine that we are on operator station 1 for example. Uh, we have created the project, we have uh, run the project on the server, we're ready to link or connect the first operator station. We simply um, go to the design and setup tab on the operator station we click on connect to new IGSS server and we enter the IP address 172.32.22.104 
and we click on the connect button. And the new thing here is that it actually creates a temporary project to allow the downloading of the project files and then you're ready to um, connect the server and the operator station and they will now run together and the operator station will be updated um, continuously. Okay, that's all for now for the IGSS Master. Uh, for further information, presentations, exercising and uh, user documentation, go to our website www.igss.com. Thank you for listening.